Hi beautiful people, welcome back. Hope everybody is doing fantastic wherever you are in this world. Hope everybody had an amazing weekend. You guys, my weekend was so, so hectic. Uh, we're going to get into a little story time. But before we get into that, please don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell so you'll be notified each time I upload. Please don't take what I say as fact. Feel free to do your own research and come to your own conclusion. And this is a huge favor. I'm going to be inserting some clips in here. And please, you guys, this is just for me making reference to certain things and for me just to try to make a point. Please do not go and be calling law enforcement or CPS or stuff like that. Please do not. This is just to reference some things, some inconsistencies of KJs, and to also just try to make a point. So with that said, let's get into this video. Okay, a little story time. So on Friday, we had this little episode where um, my eldest daughter and I actually went to do grocery shopping. And on my way back, my husband calls me up and he's like, uh, you said you went grocery shopping, but you have people dropping off your groceries. I'm like, what are you talking about? I was like, I'm on my way home. I'm literally in the subdivision. I'm on my way home with my groceries. Come to find out, you know how you do the, the Walmart online shopping or, or grocery shopping, they come and drop it off at your house. So these people drop somebody else's groceries off at my doorstep. I'm like, uh, what in the world? So I found, I don't have, I don't know many people in my subdivision. I think about four people and there's like more than a hundred houses in our subdivision. So I found my neighbor and I said, do me a favor, let me know who this certain person is or if there's a certain person by this name so we can let them know that Walmart people dropped off their groceries. We were trying, please let me mix out. So we ended up putting um, a notice on Facebook on the community, the subdivisions community Facebook and nobody seemed to have come up and said it's their groceries. So what we did was I put everything in the fridge, you know, anything that was supposed to be refrigerated or uh, put in the freezer, I did that. Come the next morning, still nobody is claiming their groceries. So I called the, pre not the president, but the yeah, no. secretary of the subdivision because she should know, collecting HOA fees, she should know everybody that's in the subdivision. So she basically tells me, oh, well, there's nobody by that name and since he, nobody's claimed it, keep it. I'm like, no, I'm not going to keep somebody else's groceries. So in turn, I went and I just returned it back to Walmart because they can do what they want to do with it. But somebody literally just, just did not get their groceries. It just blows my mind. You know, people that are so incompetent, these people that deliver these groceries, do they not just knock on the door and double check to see if they're delivering to the, the appropriate people or it just like blew my mind. But I was like also to my husband, what made you think that I would let somebody else drop off my groceries when I told you, you knew we were going to do grocery shopping. It was just like, wow, absolutely wow. Anyway, you guys, KJ has been on one of our episodes again, so this is something I want to play with you, which you did last week, Thursday. And let me just play this clip for you. Um, with everything that you see on social media, specifically from reality stars or from influencers, I think it's always okay to question what you're seeing, um, especially when it comes to legal cases. You know, I always say that when it comes to wor the world, like, you can like who you want to like. You can watch who you want to watch. Um... But always don't forget to have like your, don't forget to like use your critical thinking and don't forget like you don't need to be led to just believe blindly. So if you have questions, it's okay to question. If you have concerns, it's okay to have concerns. Don't like turn off that thing in your head that tells you that there might be a red flag that doesn't make sense. Why is this person doing this? Don't ignore the red flags that you see from people. Um, and honestly, when it comes to just like watching people, whether it's an influencer or a creator or someone on TV, this is all entertainment, right? So it's news for me to report this kind of stuff, but also like when you're interacting with people on social media, I just wanna say from my perspective alone, just 
with my own stuff that it really does go really far if you can actually humanize the people that you're watching. So every single person that you're watching, even though that they have fame, is still a person. They have thoughts, feelings, emotions. They have good days. They have bad days. They are not all good. They are not all evil. If they commit crimes, they should be held accountable. That still doesn't mean they're all bad, right? Um, it still doesn't mean that everything they do is wrong. It's just, at the end of the day, like, don't send hate to people just because you don't agree with who they are. Don't spend your time and energy in groups that only hate on a celebrity that you like. If you find yourself involved in a hate group where all you're doing is obsessing over one person or one thing, you might want to evaluate why you're doing that. I think in my own experience, if you think of it this way, is if you find yourself stuck in a community that literally only dislikes every single, every single thing someone does, why are you there? Is there something in your life that's so unhappy that you feel like you need to spend your time um, picking someone apart, ridiculing them, making them feel bad to make yourself feel better? Does it make you feel better to dehumanize someone to the point that every aspect of their lives is wrong and evil? I strive on my channel to always humanize the people that I talk to and talk about. I wasn't always very good at that, and I admit that, but I would say I have come so far, and that is one thing I pride myself on, is that when I'm speaking about people, I don't want to dehumanize them. But, you know, you can speak critically of people, you can criticize them, you cannot agree with them, but at the end of the day, they're still a person, and they don't deserve anyone harassing them, they don't deserve anyone going real life on them, they don't deserve anyone filing reports against them, calling CPS, calling police, inter like interfering in their businesses. If you don't want to, if you really don't want to deal with someone and you don't agree with someone on social media, the only way that you can really do something as a consumer is not pay attention to them. Because as long as there's a market for them, as long as they have people that are interested in watching, even if it's hate watching, they're still relevant and they're still making money. So I always say to people, like, if you really don't like someone, don't watch them. Don't tune in. Don't click, their, don't click on their Instagrams. Don't watch their videos. Don't buy their, don't swipe up on their links. Don't, any, don't buy their merch. I mean, if you really don't like someone, don't participate in that person's life. Because every click, every view, every swipe up, these people are going to make money. So that's the reality. If you don't want them to have a market, don't pay attention to them. It's that simple, but that's just my advice. And if your only objective in life is to literally be critical of something, everything someone does, like literally critical of every move they make, that's a problem. And just remember that all of us are human beings with a heart. All of us, especially, we all go to bed, we all wake up, we all put on pants or skirts or clothes, you know, like we all eat, sleep, breathe. Just because someone has a number behind their follower count does not make them any less human. And if you're participating in trolling behavior where your sole mission is on Twitter to berate, harass, inflict pain onto somebody else, honestly, that says more about you than the person you're saying these things to. Happy and healthy people don't go out of their way to tear down and hurt other people. Let me humor you, KJ. Let me humor you. Me, I cover you for a specific reason. Just to point out your inconsistencies and we can't change your mind. We definitely can't change your mind. We can't tell you what to do. I can't tell you what to do. But maybe you can get something out of this. But let me tell you something. If you feel that I don't have a life, my life is full, absolutely full. I am raising five kids, okay? One is out the house, but still, I am still a parent to him. I'm still going to be his mother, okay? So my life is absolutely full. So if you think in your mind that I need to question myself, why am I reporting on you? It's for a reason. And that reason is that you can't just seem to humble yourself. It absolutely just blows my mind. What I do is in my time. It's not for money, it's not for notoriety, it's not for clout, it's got nothing to do with that. I just do it to point out your inconsistencies for the mere fact is you put yourself, as we now know, you chose to put yourself in this lawsuit. 
You chose to take the risks. You chose to do what you did, okay? So don't sit on your high horse or sit on your recliner and say that we need to question ourselves. We need to actually think about if where we at or that we may not be happy with ourselves. I am such a happy person. I could not be more happier than what I am, okay? On the other hand, you seem to have the problem, in my opinion. You seem to be the one that can't get the fuck off of social media. You seem to be the one that's obsessed with what you do as a job. On Friday, she went and she did a whole live. And you guys, I'm going to show you the live from Friday to the live she did on Saturday. I'm going to come and sound like a total bitch, but I have a point to prove. She was all about, she was happy, she was, she had no, in my opinion, she looked like she had no problems. This is the live she did on Friday. You guys, it's so late. It's very late. And I am just jumping on Instagram to say hello to everyone. I hope you guys are having a good day. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good morning. Wow. It's been a week. No, 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 no. Go, go been a very big week. Oh, it's 9.57 here. I'm just really tired. My makeup is perfect. I was just laying in bed. That's funny. Uh, I So I did a video about Kale and Brianna. And listen, I know that my Instagram, my stuff on Teen Mom is not widely viewed. I don't have a large audience for Teen Mom content. Um, I just don't. And... Most of my audience doesn't care about Teen Mom anymore. Hey, Frida, Frida, please, Frida, Frida, come on, Frida, Frida, oh my God, Frida, oh, Frida, Frida, please, here, she's like straddling me because there's fireworks. I've had a runny nose all day from my um, allergies, Frida, she's stressed out. She loves her mommy. Yes, I'm her safe space. I feel like, It's been a really tough few days, you know? We've got people that have been stalking us. We still got death threats this week. I still had a lot of shit that I was dealing with. And just because I haven't talked about it, is that if someone wants to share about their trauma and they wanna share what they experienced as a victim and how they were treated by the police and how they felt they were treated by the police and how they felt dis dismissed, diminished, diminished and not believed. I think the only way we can move forward as a society is instead of running to the police to get the report, which basically says they don't believe you, is to believe that there's a systemic problem and how victims are treated. Bill Cosby being released and overturned is an example of just how fucking far we have to go. My rape kit, as far as I know, I've never gotten any word from it. Um, I never received any notification on whether or not it was processed. I was never told whether or not my, the things that I, they took from my home, if those were processed, I never got my clothes back. I never got my bedding back. I don't have a lot of the stuff from that night. I don't know anything. Now, this is the live she did on Saturday.
Hi everyone. Well, I don't want to scream and yell. I don't want to cry. Um, I just want to say that if you're someone that is actively working to discredit victims of sexual violence and are doing so in a vendetta because you are angry with an old friend that you need help. The information I have been given today by of what Aaron Costello is doing border lines on invasion of privacy and stalking. I also knew that the police doubted me. And I knew that the police, in my opinion, didn't do a thorough job and didn't get me justice. And I also knew that I'm not alone in that. I actually was <clears throat> motivated to share my story when an article was done like this investigative report was done by the by the Star Tribune in Minnesota in 2018. When the Star Tribune did this whole expose in 2018, they uncovered that there was a backlog looked at. Um, DNA not swabbed or DNA swabbed and not tested. Um, a lot, right? And I was like, okay, that's me. I don't, to this, to my knowledge, I don't know if my rape kit was ever tested. I had a rape kit done in 20, 2007, and I don't know if it ever was tested. I was never told if it was tested. I never found out if it was tested. I never, I went, I did everything I was supposed to do, you guys. Now, the reason I bring this up for me, this is my thoughts, my observations, okay? This is just my opinion. She came on her Instagram Live on Saturday. And for me, it was the timing. And I'm talking about the timing because Saturday, Emily D. Baker came on her channel and the law nerds rolled because the lawsuit was filed in regard to Swanson and Halo Beauty. And all of a sudden, in my opinion, KJ was like upset for the mere fact that she's discussed this from about two weeks ago on what Erin um, from EKC People Suck has done. Two weeks ago, she was on t Spiracy's backside. She was on Erin's backside and there was somebody else and I can't remember who it was. And she was all about, look how bad these people are. Um, T-spiracy, it was because of her video that uh, CPS was called. Before I go any further, okay, and this is why I'm saying, please do not go and call law enforcement. Don't call CPS. This is just for reference and for me to prove a point, okay? KJ, you, these are the videos which I can show you where is where your job comes first. And let me play these clips for you. The midwifery, like, hierarchy works in the United States. The United States would need to get to a point with... They have to get to a point in where they have... Hold on one second. You cannot have him screaming like that! Sorry guys, my son is just like losing. I don't even know where he is. All I can hear him is screaming and my husband doesn't seem to care. I've never had questions. So back in 2015, if you remember, he um, an allegation came forward about a police report that had been filed in relation to their oldest son, Josh, into some behaviors he had done. Kind of like everything's going on. Well, here, 
Here is what Derek has been saying online. So he posted a photo a couple days ago where he was talking about how, you know, they had they celebrated Christmas and they weren't at the family part at the family house. In the initial in the initial um, statements, he claimed that they're not allowed at the house unless Jim Bob is there. Imagine doing a job. Imagine doing a job. Imagine doing a job and not one of your peers stands up for you. They broke the wall of silence. Not even a single one of his. Not even a single one of his colleagues. Offended him. I don't obsess about you. What you do is your business. But when you come now, and this is totally my opinion, and want to cry foul and be so upset for what um, Aaron has done to you, these are the questions that I have. And maybe it's not a legitimate questions, but why all of a sudden is this affecting you this way now? And to me, it's like so coincidental that these lawsuits are dropping where you are witness which makes people realize but what the hell how far did you go and why are you truly manipulated that's just my questions okay so in this you say you are so heartbroken you are so traumatized kj from 2007 to 2018 why didn't you follow up on your case you came on your channel in 2018 when this um, article came out. And I'm going to sound like a total bitch, but I, I apologize. Did you use that to validate what was going on with you? Are you using now what's, what's going on with the lawsuit? Are you using your situation to, for people to feel bad for you, to feel sorry for you? Because... In my opinion, I'm in the same boat as you, KJ. Same boat as you. And I promised myself, and I said I wouldn't get emotional because it is so hard, you guys. I live a very hard life. And I'm talking about in respect to what I have been through. Give me a minute. This happened to me when I was a child. I blocked it out of my mind, and I've told the story before. I've blocked it out of my mind for over three decades. Not a day goes by that I can't function, but I choose, I choose to make it work for me. I take my time and I do what I need to do behind the scenes because I've learned a long time ago Without us as parents, mothers or, or, or dads raising our kids, we are not okay. If, if we're not okay, nobody around us is okay. I have those flashbacks 24-7. I understand. It's very hard, KJ. It's very, very hard. But one thing I don't appreciate is it being used as an excuse. Mm -hmm. I do not appreciate a person like you standing up for people like us. And you guys, this is just me. This is just my opinion, okay? I truly don't appreciate it. And yes, we all have different experiences, okay? I get that. I totally get that. But one thing I do not appreciate, I'm going to say this again, as a person like you, speaking for people like us, I don't ever, please, you guys, I don't want sympathy. I don't want pity. I don't want to be held back. I don't want to be 
bored down by what had, had happened to me. I don't want that. But what I am, definitely am a sympathetic, empathetic, and I would give anything to take that pain away from anybody, including myself. This what made me so sympathetic and empathetic to the Duggard girls. Doesn't mean because you didn't bring up that, but you re-victimized them all the time. I said I wouldn't get emotional, but I'm getting emotional. But just to talk about it. You go on your channel. And we're all accountable for ourselves. We're totally accountable for ourselves. You go on your channel to be, disparage these people. To call them out. For you to talk about these people. For your vile vile subscribers to go after these people I'm not saying what Erin did was right or wrong that was her choice her choice I'm not going to hold anything against her for what she's done but have you for one second realized that that is what you did to Tati you went and you dug into her life maybe not the same thing but that's exactly what you did to Tati. And you can't hold yourself accountable for that. And you still went and you got super chats. You monitored your, uh, monetized your video. All that. You have no human decency. And you want to flex to people. For all that money that you've amassed from talking about these Duggars' hardships and their heartbreak, and their pain. You want to flex. And this is what you put on uh, Twitter. I've been more happy to have cleaners back in our home. It's been over a year since we lost our company. COVID made it unsafe to hire anyone new. We found a new, we found a company with fully vaccinated employees to clean. This is a small splurge. I make for my family and it's worth it. And she seemed to have gotten a lot of backlash for making that tweet. And then she says, I realize it's a luxury, but I work super hard and we spend every minute of our free time caring for our son. Respite is so important for us. If we didn't do this, our house would be filthy. He deserves a clean home and we can't keep up with his needs and work. Please have perspective. We live in a time where we cannot even share that we are happy and that we hired cleaners which we do because of my son's fragile health and our lack of time because of the demand of his conditions and work. Without people telling me I shouldn't post it because it'll hurt people's feelings. That is something that should not be posted on your Twitter because it does come off as a huge flex, number one. Number two, that is something that you should be discussing with your friends, with your family members, not putting it on Twitter because it does come out like, oh, you're bragging. And secondly, you again are putting your son in the midst of this. By saying, oh, it's because of him you need it. No, KJ. In my opinion, I can give you advice. There are so many ways in which you can actually avoid having people in your home to clean for you. All the times that you spend after your work, after your job, what do you do? You come and you spend time on Instagram Live where you feel you need to unwind and do whatever you need to do. Your son's in bed. Take that time to clean your home. I clean my house three times a day. I'm raising five kids, okay? Four at home, but believe you me, they still make a mess. You can learn to manage your time. But because you're going to say, oh, your, your, your son has needs. No, stop using him as an excuse, in my opinion. Then you go after Erin Costello for going and getting your records. Okay. But look at yourself. You paid one of your subscribers in Texas to go and get court records of a little girl 
that you were accused of being a brat. Now you can say that you are alive and somebody mentioned that she was a brat. But let me show this clip again, where you went on Critical Case Channel and doubled down on calling this little girl a brat. You know, it's like, I remember seeing that video and I remember thinking the way that the girl was acting in the beginning where she was like shaking her head. I was like, is this like, is she acting? It seemed, it didn't seem authentic in that, in that part. I was like, it, it's like a movie. Like, cause she was like, no. And then she's like running away and coming back. And it just, I was like, this doesn't seem real. And then I did a live stream on my vlogs channel, which I'm on right now. And I was talking about how I'm a mom. I'm an eight year, almost eight year old. And we were talking about how kids can get a little bit bratty when they don't get their way and they don't get what they want. Of course. Yeah. They yeah. And so now I'm like, you, everyone's like, you called Sophia Brad. And I'm like, can kids not get bratty? Yeah. And then what I noticed was with her language, it didn't, it was way too mature for her age. It's like, wow. Now this is an excuse. Her excuse or her story behind calling Sophie Long a brat. And this is what she says. Last year, I released court records relating to a viral story about a child in the middle of a custody battle. The father accused the mother and her boyfriend of sexual abuse. The documents, not medical records, were obtained and released with permission given by the girl's mother. Furthermore, the court doctors and nurses determined no sexual abuse occurred. Additionally, the father's now ex-wife has alleged that he may have coached his daughter to falsely accuse her mother of abuse so he could get full custody of her. The father is now in the middle of his third, of his third divorce. He has a restraining order out against him for allegedly slapping his three-year-old son, leaving finger marks on the face, and is on his way to having no custody of any of his kids. So that justifies you, grown woman with a kid that is a mother of calling that kid a brat and where you as you saw from the previous video you said oh you could see she was acting really katie you should be ashamed of yourself and not even to mention as i'm filming this right now katie is doing a youtube video on her channel talking about this little girl that is missing what fucking nerve that is a nerve unbelievable absolutely unbelievable then she puts a screenshot of this google drive that aaron has actually um, sent to the police department in minnesota and she says this this is creepy as fuck someone is running a bot account and automatically sharing all of my tweets into a discord this is next level disturbing okay Next level disturbing, right? When you were reporting on Tati, remember that video where you said, oh, her name is not Tati, her name is Tatiana. And how you were trying to get birth certificates. You couldn't get information about her dad where you alluded to the fact that he may be in the mob. You yourself on your channel, you grabbed my attention when you showed or you said that you have so many folders on Tati. You reported when you were at Patheos how allegedly that James Westbrooks had actually took his mother off of life support for the financial gain. The videos are out there, Katie. The videos are out there. So you can't come right now and say, after a lawsuit, right, you can't come and say, oh, you weren't found guilty of anything. That doesn't take away the fact what you did. That is fucking creepy. So Katie asked people to retweet this, and it says, Enter KJ world has become so toxic that we need to work toward healing. I will stick up for anyone being harassed and harmed by anyone. Please retweet and help me spread this message. Katie. <laughs> Let me inform you of something. You can go on and on and on and saying we building our channels off of your name. But you got to realize 
to us you are so delusional to me i can only speak for myself you are so far from reality you are so delusional you believe your own lies in my opinion do you really think these people are i agree i 100 percent agree people go too far you in real life let's not forget that i'm gonna keep reminding you of that kj you in real life and you can't tell me or say that Clark Swanson fit you all this. He found you. He found you. So he found his way to do what he needed to do. Okay? And another thing is that you keep saying that people are turning other people against you. Let's take Preacher Boy, the most recent one. Okay? And I'm not using him as an excuse or anything. But he did his due diligence. It wasn't because people told him what a bad person you are. He did his own due diligence. He researched you and he didn't appreciate what you were doing. You've got to accept that as fact. And the reason why he's not taking his video down, KJ, is for the mere fact is that what you did to him prior to all these. Was he supposed to just go on your word? that you didn't do all this, but clearly he's not comfortable with it. But also let's not forget how you gaslit your audience and said that preacher boy did all these bad things, but not realizing how you went on your life and you alluded to the fact he's an abuser. That's just the facts, KJ, you got to accept it. You're saying everybody turned you against uh, uh, Leslie, Sherelle's world, all these people. These people have their own channels. I would love to hear it from them. Exactly who turned them against you. And in my opinion, you turned yourself against them. Okay, let's talk about you claiming to not do anything illegal. <laughs> let's go back to Josh Duggar's hearing. Okay. You said in your live, which I'm going to play after this. You said that you took you took a screen grab of Josh Duggar just for your mental note. And then you put it on your Twitter. So I'm confused. But I'm sure you'll have an excuse for that too. Today I was at the hearing for his arraignment. And here's what I'll tell you about the arraignment today. Um, he was not wearing an orange jumpsuit. He was actually wearing a black and white jumpsuit. So like a pin, like the stripe, the horizontal stripe jumpsuits. Um, it had like a Washington County like emblem on it. And um, I grabbed a screenshot just just for record so I could have like a, a memory of what he was doing. <clears throat> so this is, I wish I could share the photos with you. Like, I, I, I mean, I wish I could share like, the brain photo in my mind of what Josh looked like in his arraignment. I, it's like, it's like literally seared in my brain of how he was smirking. You guys, this just makes me have a good laugh to myself. She says, committing yourself to a lie doesn't make the lie any more truthful. It just makes you look like a raging narcissistic abuser. Leave me alone. Stop sharing my address and phone number on Twitter. You got to be kidding me. It's like she believes her own lies in my opinion. And wasn't it KJ the one to admit that she herself is a narcissist? She admitted to being a narcissist. And I'll insert that here. And I'll even link that story down below. You can read the full article. Amazing. And also, this is still something that's totally, totally, totally... I'm still confused. She knew these people were harassing her for, what, two years or stalking her for two years? She still hasn't done anything about it. In her video two weeks ago, she said she knew where Erin lived. Now, in a video that she did just a day or two ago, she says she doesn't know who, uh, where Erin lives. This is just a few of her inconsistencies. Two weeks ago, she didn't know who Erin was. Now, when she had to give her story for people to feel bad for her, to feel sorry for her, to empathize with her, she said Erin was her friend, her Facebook friend. Are you fucking kidding me? Now all of a sudden, oh, she loves the Duggar kids. 
she's all for the Duggar kids. Telling people in her life last night, oh, go love bomb Joel Duggar. All these years she's been covering these Duggar kids, she has been nothing but nasty to them. Have you ever recalled one time where KJ has promoted Joel Duggar's YouTube or Instagram or anything like that to give her support? Hell no. What has she done in turn? She has promoted Amy Duggar King. All this money that she has amassed, who has she shared that money with? Amy Duggar King. But being such a good client, but being such a good customer to Amy Duggar King, where she said she spent in one month, she spends a thousand dollars buying from 3130. You guys, I'm going to end with saying this. And I'm just speaking on my behalf. But the timing for me, it just makes no sense. It's like convenient, absolutely convenient. And then when you want to sit on your high horse or your pedestal and tell people if they're involved in a sphere or in a realm of people uh, hating on her, I don't hate on her. I don't ever use the word hate. Hate is a very strong word. She just has so many inconsistencies and you cannot always be a victim or you can't always just be the one targeted. But the most important thing you've got to look at, people, who's always the common denominator? KJ. She has done so many hurtful things to so many people. And those people need to come out and talk about it. And for the most part, it's, it's creators. They have their own channels. I can't tell their story. They need to tell their story. She is so vile. She sits on her recliner and she says, don't go send hate. KJ, have you seen those people's comments that you talk about? Have you seen the comments? Your audience is vile. You are an advocate for using critical thinking. You can't even use your own critical thinking. That's just the way I see it. She has moved from speaking about the Duggars in a negative light, negative light, to how now she loves the Duggars. Let me just play this for you. Jim Bob Duggar was essentially getting all of the cash, getting paid to his company called Mad Family, and he was supposed to distribute money, but yet, According to The Sun and people I've talked to, the kids were not getting a percentage that they were promised. And it's Now she's all about promoting the Duggar Kings. We should rally behind the Duggar kids. I've been doing that. I, I know I have. She has not done that. She has been so disparaging to these Duggar kids, in my opinion. Now all of a sudden, going love bomb Joel Dillard the nerve and in my opinion is this all because now the duggars are cancelled no more content so she gotta find a way now so she's looking for avenues to keep the dugger content going just a thought so in my humble opinion okay kj needs to face reality and take accountability but we know she's not going to do that because kj is never wrong in her eyes she's never wrong she knows it all. She's everything. But that's just what I see. You guys are not taking up a lot of your time. And you know what? Once again, please don't take what you see in this video and run to authorities. It's just making a point. KJ needs to understand that people pay attention. And if her audience, her echo chamber, want to just, you know, take everything that she says with all their heart and run with it, so be it. But be careful, you've got to protect yourselves because there's some people that say how KJ saved their life. KJ has let a lot of people down and it all comes out. KJ is nothing but the money in my opinion. KJ will let you know that. KJ will go on and says how she has so many friends. In my opinion, KJ has no friends because when you sit on your channel 
or you sit on Twitter 24 seven. And that's just a, a reach right there. But when you sit on your, your, your social media all the time, it's like, where's the time, KJ? You put on your Twitter that you're sitting in the presence of your child, listening to Gabby Hanna's foul mouth. It's like, how much of this has control of your life? You went on just the other night and you said, oh, your house is spick and span clean from top to bottom, except your filming room. What are you hiding? What are you hiding? Why can't the cleaners go in there and clean that? Your dog is in there 24 seven. It must, you know, need thorough cleaning. But clearly, maybe they didn't sign an NDA so you couldn't let them into your filming room. It's just an observation. But you guys, thank you so much. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and the notification bell. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Please be kind to one another, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.